Letters to Santa by Mia Mode, narrated by Otis Jiry. As a mail carrier, I see a lot of these letters, usually addressed to a Mr. Claus in the North Pole. Sometimes there's a stamp, sometimes there's not. I always make sure to grab these letters. I like keeping the spirit alive. I throw them in my bag and I move on. Whenever I return to my car, I like to look through them, uh, whatever special letters I've collected. It gives me an insight into what type of children live in these homes. The upscale neighborhoods ask for too much. The poorer neighborhoods ask for very little. Handwriting varies from neat bubble letters with hearts dotting eyes to messy scrawl, and spelling that either can be accredited to the little ones or children that don't do very well in school. On this run, a particular letter catches my eye, although it can hardly be called a letter. A piece of paper cut vaguely rectangular with jagged edges that could cut the skin. No stamp, just a drawn square in the top corner that could substitute for one, I suppose. Shaky lines, imitating the folds of a letter on the back. And a message addressed to none other than the fabled Mr. Claus of the North Pole. It catches my eye because it's very simple. Messy handwriting, terrible spelling. The message, however, is very clear. The last line is all I can see. I've been very good this year. Please help me. These are the letters I look for. I tuck this incredibly special letter away in my pocket. The child's address is on the back. I run over my mental list. Neglectful parents? Check. Bad family life. Check. Bad neighborhood? Check. I peek up at the apartment door from where I'm parked. Easy getaway. Check. I get on with my route, and before I know it, I'm back at the apartment complex at the dead of night. I've always prided myself on my efficiency and timeliness. It's three in the morning, and surprisingly, there's not a single soul in sight. I park close to the complex, but as far from a streetlight as I can manage. I pull the letter out from where it's been burning a hole in my pocket all day. It might be dark, but the address is very clear to me. It's relatively easy to break into the apartment. The parents didn't even lock the door. A cursory glance around the room reveals empty bottles of alcohol and stains on a carpet that, at one point, must have been beige. This one won't be missed. I reach my target and they're asleep. I work fast, nonetheless. Tape over the mouth, a bag over the head, handcuffs. They only begin to stir when I'm down the street and they're in the back seat of my car. The place that I live is fairly secluded and there's a very wonderful soundproof bomb shelter in the backyard. I thank whatever paranoid nut that lived here before me every time I bring a victim home. I sit them on the chair. They're struggling. I've worked with victims that like to squirm before, so it's not long before I've bound them to the chair. I pull off the cloth bag I've put over their head and their eyes blink open. The shelter is bright. My instruments almost glitter in their mounts on the walls. I smile down at my victim. The fear in their eyes only reinforces how much I love my job. You've been very naughty this year, Mr. Meyer. I hope this precious little girl doesn't mind Christmas coming early this year. 